When Mary heard her name spoken that morning in the garden, she heard something that triggered something deeper in her than anything she had ever heard in her life. She heard kindness. She heard her name spoken with a kindness. The same kindness that turned her toward him in the first place. When she met him, no one had ever been so kind to her. It became a moment of recognition for her. It is for all of us. It wasn't so much her name that caused her to recognize him. It was the kindness with which her name was spoken. Mary. Mary. Oh, Mary. In that moment of utter kindness, she remembered. Her mind was rushing, rushing with images one after another of how he treated her since she met him that day and he helped her. How when so many others were shaming her, afraid of her, discounting her, he stepped in to help her. He stopped everything to listen to her. He took the time to teach her. He watched out for her. He respected her as a person and a woman in a culture that didn't. He cared for her family. In that flood of memories, she remembered his kindness to others too. The man born blind calling out for help. The widow walking past him in the rush of the city with her only son in a casket in front of her. The woman with the hemorrhage who had not been touched or held in years because her religion told her she was unclean. And the man who waited 39 years for the ability to walk. And she remembered, she remembered his last hours on this earth. This Jesus who was treated as cruelly as anyone in history who did nothing to deserve it and whose last words were to his torturers to ask for them to be forgiven. That's how she knew him. She knew him in his kindness. Kindness reveals divinity. Kindness reveals divinity. Perhaps that's why to experience kindness some, retouches something so deep, so holy in us. Every act of kindness carries with it every other act of kindness. And it becomes for us a moment of recognition, a moment of resurrection. Kindness turned that garden she was standing in that morning, weeping, into paradise. It does for all of us. Yet, my friends, kindness has fallen into neglect, it seems. There's a tsunami of meanness rushing through this country and so many countries in the world right now. It's not front page news that kindness is in very short supply these days. Our country is bitterly divided and filled with an alarming amount of hate and prejudice. One of our attorney generals said a while back, it has become easier to find a gun than find a friend. Social media captures it. Even music reflects it. Our ability to be kind seems to be shredding. Cruelty, meanness, knows no distinction between classes. The rich and the poor and the ones in the middle are not exempt. It seems to have become so normal to be mean. The truth is, we must be kind to one another or die.
given how unkind things have become, it would be nothing less than a resurrection for us to witness a true act of kindness. What a good society needs is kindness. George Eliot once wrote, what do we live for if it's not to make life less difficult for each other? That to me is the definition of kindness, making life less difficult for each other. If we want to be someone who makes life less difficult for others, we will need three qualities. We will need disposition and warm generosity and self-control. Disposition that we will make ourselves available to as we are. We will be as available as we can be at the disposal of the other without exception. It is pure charity to be actively at the service of others, especially strangers. Warm generosity, another of those essential qualities. Our gestures and words must be real, they must be authentic, and they must not have any other hidden motive or intention other than to help this person in front of me. And self-control. We will exercise self-control and discretion if we want to be someone who is kind. We have to know when to step in and we have to know when to step back. Kind people do not control others or make them feel guilty ever for the help they just received. Nor do they need the help they offered to be remembered or create any expectation in this person in front of them. It's just that self-effacing kindness is. As they, they help us manage life, whether it's the keys we dropped or the directions somewhere we lost or checking in if we're okay after they saw us fall. Disposition and warm generosity and self-control. Remember a time when someone was kind to you? How did you react to being treated so kindly? Pleasant shock, startled, moved to tears? All those are true for me when I experience the kindness of friends and especially strangers. I can only hope as I move through these days that my eyes, that my eyes were that kind to that student who poured out his guilt and shame to me. I can only hope that my voice was kind to the woman I met who was so full of anxiety and worry. I can only hope that my touch was kind to that student who challenged me. How noble for each of us to seek in any given moment to make people's lives less difficult. Our culture continues to stress hardness and toughness. It fosters a distrust, it seems, of anything that looks soft. And it mistakenly assigns kindness to the... Kindness can hurt. Hurt to be kind. Hurt to receive the kindness. For example, we are kind when we tell someone a tough truth so as to spare them further hurt. Tough indeed is this kindness. A good society is one in which 
its members can flourish, right, in every way possible. Justice is clearly a necessary feature of that kind of society, but we've got to realize, we've got to get this through our thick head, mine especially, that justice is not enough. Justice is not enough. Justice without kindness is cruel. Justice alone cannot create a good society. Ask Jaber in Les Mis, the novel and the movie, ask him. Yes, he was all about justice. But where did his lack of kindness happen anywhere? To enforce the right thing, to insist on the rules as good as those rules are, without kindness is ineffective. Kindness perfects justice. It helps us not to descend into violence. Hear this, hear this, you who are priests and bishops and parents and spouses and friends and teachers and bosses and politicians and administrators, hear this. A new challenge once spoken will be forgotten if it's not delivered with kindness. I think it's time in our culture to resurrect kindness and let kindness be a mark of a resurrected life. The crucifixion was about violence, human violence. The kindness of God was revealed in resurrection. You see, my friends, kindness is a new word for resurrection given the state of things. It softens the heart enough so that it finally slips into us that we are cared for, that we exist, that we're not alone, that we somehow still matter. That's why kindness to us has the possibility of raising us up. Resurrection. If we are ever to become kind, we've got to begin to see that despite our missteps, 25% of the time, we are basically kind people. We really are kind at the core. And if we start believing that, then we, who we are, will flow into words and actions that are kind, almost effortlessly. Only then will we start treating ourselves more kindly. Too many of us, too many of us treat ourselves with anything but kindness, even violence. Whether we're cutting ourselves or starving ourselves or beating ourselves up with self-criticism, to ourselves we can be so brutal, full of guilt, full of recrimination, full of second guessing. That's not kind to ourselves. If we're ever to be kind or even kinder, we're going to need more face-to-face -face contact with other human beings, you and I. It's too easy to be mean to the faceless other. Even vilify them in social media in ways we would never think, think to do if we sat across a table from them. We need more flesh and blood encounters especially with the suffering others, if we're ever to be kind or kinder. I see our Holy Father, Pope Francis, trying, trying to make the church kinder. Certain there were long, certainly there were long periods of time when it could be said that the laws of our church were not imposed with kindness. I'm reminded of a line by Jimmy Stewart in a movie called Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I'm sure you've seen it. He said, I wouldn't give you two cents for all your fancy rules if behind them they didn't have a little bit of plain, ordinary kindness and a little looking out for the other fella. I've had my share, I suppose, as all of us have, of people over the years who have been mean to me, judged me, tried to manipulate me. But I'm here to tell you tonight, people have been 
so kind to me. I don't know what to make of it sometimes. It brings me to tears to think about it, to talk about it. I'm not the kindest person in the world. I've met many people who are so much kinder than I. But I have to say, when do I like myself the most? I like myself the most those times when I was kind. This I trust. This I trust. That in my very last heartbeat and with my very last breath, I will hear my name spoken with a kindness deeper than any kindness I have ever heard or known in my life. Gary. Kindness is everything.